first ever Sales Wolves podcast. <laughs> I'm Tyler Harris. <laughs> this and I'm is Joseph Caldwell. Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. The original. The original. The OGs. <laughs> the bearded OGs. <laughs> So what is a sales wolf? Uh, you know, I'll give you my definition first. I think a sales wolf is the most highly competitive. A sales wolf will do anything it takes to get the sale, uh, to, to, to meet the goal, to exceed the expectations. To that doesn't stop when they've won, that, that stops when they're when when there's nothing stop. left. <laughs> to if I get. boiled it down, I'd say they're probably the most hungry. Right? Yeah, absolutely. They're the most hungry. Absolutely. Sales wolves are hungry. So what are we going to do on this podcast, man? I don't know what you want to do. Let's teach some people. Let's teach some people how to be sales wolves, how to be more successful. You know, I think probably there's a lot of people out there that were like you and I, mm -hmm. um, that, uh, that they're looking for information. They're hungry. They want to get better. And, you know, one of the things that we got so fed up with over the years, and, and if there's a system out there, I've probably bought it. If there's some kind of gimmick, I've tried it. If there's a shortcut, I've tramped down that road, which um, all the shortcuts I took, um, if we added them all together, it took me much longer to get to where I'm at had I not just stayed on the trail to get here. I don't know if that made sense. Well, I mean, you get halfway down one shortcut and then you take another. And then you take another. You know you're lost. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. That's funny. It reminds me of something from Alice in Wonderland. Where she <laughs> yeah, says, Cheshire, was it Cheshire Puss? Cheshire Push? Tell me which way to go. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, and the cat says, well, that all depends on where you want to get to. And Alice says, well, anywhere I'll do. And he says, well, then it doesn't really matter which way you go. And she says, well, I want to get somewhere. And he says, well, you'll get somewhere. It just depends on how long you want to take to get there. <laughs> That's kind of what I just said in his roundabout circle. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, Sales Wolves, back to why we're doing this podcast and, 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 and who Sales Wolves podcast is and then who we are. Uh, a little bit, Tyler, you want to tell them your background? And, and Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to know who you're hearing from, for sure. So, sure. Tyler Harris, I'm 30, just turned 32. I've uh, got a four and a half month old baby, happily married. Uh, been in sales all my life, different different sides of sales from financial advisor to selling the most random and terrible things that you can imagine. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I've always been in sales. And, and so what I know is I've failed miserably in sales and, and I've excelled in sales and, and I can remember specific things that I did in both examples. Um, and so that's what we really wanna do is be able to take from our experience and, and provide tactical value, things that you can actually use tomorrow, uh, today, uh, tr to try to be a tool that you can pick up and, and put into use in your daily uh, practice. And, and so for me currently, uh, right now I'm the National Coordinator with Consolidated Assurance. Um, to give you an idea of what, what in the world does that mean. Uh, so I currently sell, so I, I am a sales wolf. Uh, I, I have a territory uh, down in Georgia. I travel three to four nights a week. Uh, last year I did a little, little over 200 nights in a hotel uh, out of town. The, week, uh, the year before that I did 235 uh, nights in a hotel <laughs> and just hustling. I uh, wrote two little over 2,000 life insurance policies last year, about the same the year before, uh, but last year took on a, an additional role of helping lead and train uh, our coordinators across the country. Um, but at the end of the day, where my food gets put on my table, it's from what I go out and sell. Uh, and I think that's super important to know that you're not listening to a sales coach that hasn't Sold. And as you You're, can see, he's not missed a meal. <laughs> so uh, that's how his food gets on the table. But uh, tell him, man, tell him. So 2014 is when you, at the end of 2014. So really, 2015 was your first year. Yeah, so first full 12 months. Because it was like at the end of October when I got started and right. got in training with what we do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you sold two, how many policies in 2015? It was almost 2,000. Yeah, and you made 303. What's most you have maybe prior to that? 90. 
No. Ever. Ever. The year prior made like 55. 60, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so you went from making 55, 60 to within a span of 12 months making over 300. Mm -hmm. And last year you made what? 450. 450. Yeah. So that, I wanted to ask him that specifically because I wanted you to know who you were hearing from and the fact if he's talking about selling, he knows what he's talking about. So that always, if I was listening to somebody, I just want to know, did they have the fruit on the tree, mm -hmm. right? Could they show me that they had done what they're teaching me? If I'm going to go find a personal trainer, I'm not going to use a fat one. Hmm. I'm just not. Yeah. I'm not going to use an out of shape person that looks like they're going to die in the gym if they're going to teach me how to be in shape, right? So. And another thing with that too is I, I'm a big believer in current credibility. Current, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's one thing I, I understand to listen to a, a sales coach mm -hmm. uh, that, that did sell a ton and had an incredible career and has a list of accolades a mile long, but there's something, there's something unique and, and interesting about listening to someone that's currently, currently selling, doing. like yesterday sold, and can bring stuff from yesterday into this conversation uh, that may be that much more relevant. So, so when it comes to selling, we've, we've, we've figured out how to do what we're, what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, one of the reasons why we wanted to start this podcast is because of all the things out there, all the misinformation out there and all the things you have to buy. I don't want you to have to buy it. I just want to give you the information, shoot you straight. This is no fairy tale rainbows, unicorns, right? We want to give you the information. If you're in sales, which I believe every single person is, everybody on this earth is in sales. I don't care if you're the doctor or the lawyer. I don't care if you're, you're a, you're a uh, stay at home mom. I don't care if you're a stay at home dad, you're in sales. You got to sell that young and on eating broccoli and it'll make your life a whole lot better, right? <laughs> or if you're a, if you're a lawyer, the best lawyers on this earth are the best salespeople. Right. So, so all of us are in sales. So that in and of itself, we want to bring, we want to bring information that you can use no matter what your career is, because we believe that everybody's in sales and somebody has to sell something for, for anything to move or happen. Right. You had a monster drink you were drinking earlier <laughs> and uh, somebody had to sell you that before that monster driver of the truck has a job. Right. And, uh, and, and they so, didn't sell me one. They sold me two because two. Got two them for, for two. four. Yeah. And yeah, we'll get into that one. That's a good story too, right? I got that happen to me one day and, and uh, it's a funny story. But So this podcast is, is really about you, the listener, and how we can help you go beyond, get to the next level. And we love talking to hungry people. We love talking to wolves. And if you, if you think, well, I'm hungry, but I'm, I'm not that good at this, and you may just be a baby wolf, but I can tell you, you know what's cool about being a baby wolf? You're still a damn wolf right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you can grow and learn and apply the information that we're going to talk about each podcast and you can take yourself beyond. And here's another thing that we're committed to. You can, you can look us both in the eyes. We are never going to sell something on this. We're not going to, we're not, I'm not coming up with a calendar or a gimmick or a, or a, or a ebook, a, an ebook or anything else. I'm not going to do it. You can't buy anything here. And, uh, so don't try, don't, don't call us and ask us to come speak for anything. We don't, we don't want to do that either. Um, we've beard we've, oil, beard oil. I, if you have some <laughs> to sell, beard oil. if you have some to sell me, I need some actually. It um, smells like money. <laughs> it smells like money. <laughs> now, if we were going to sell some beard oil, we would call it money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, so that's, that's what we're here to do. And so our first topic that we wanted to talk about today, did we touch everything we we're supposed to touch? Yeah. I mean, just one other thing I wanted here? to add before that is, is really what this is. It's, it's our passion and it's what we figured out is our purpose now. And, and I can tell you from sure. my experiences, when, when I went from you know, 50, 60,000 in income, met Joseph, met our other business partners and went from 60 to 300, that changed my life. 100%. That changes anybody. And the only way that happened was because they poured into me every single day and they built my belief way beyond where it was. They believed more in me than I believed in myself. And they built my confidence, rebuilt, honestly, rebuilt my confidence. And, and I saw myself completely changed. And so what I saw in that process is I knew that, number one, I could pay that forward and start doing that for other people. But at the very basic level, I saw that it's possible for someone to completely change and to go from from here to there quickly yep. 
all because of the information that they're putting into their brain. And that's and that to me is where the passion started really, really burning inside me to make sure that this type of information and this type of affirmation was getting was getting fed to people and that it was getting fed to them for free. It's super easy for us to sit here and for me to have said that and then come with the ask and be like, hey, uh, $29.99, We'd love for you to be successful. It's super easy to, to want somebody to be successful when they're buying your product. It's way harder uh, to want a whole lot of people to be successful when it's not only us not charging anything, but it's taking up our time and yeah. energy and resources uh, to put the information out there. So it is a it, it is truly a passion of ours to make sure that what has been poured into me, I know was poured into him by his mentors. And so it's the very same thing as us paying that forward and wanting it to pour into other people. And there is nothing more than, that I want than six months from now to get an email from somebody that said, hey, I, I randomly stumbled upon y'all's uh, Sales Wolves podcast. And man, I've been watching it for the last two months and my sales have increased from you know, 70 to 100,000. And, uh, and it wouldn't have happened without you guys. Yeah, but and that's, that's, that's the ROI. And the only reason that I told, that you even know that we're in insurance sales and, and, I, and we gave you some numbers is because we wanted you to know who you were listening to. Never are they gonna be able to buy insurance here. We're not, gonna tell, we're not even talking about who we, none of that you know stuff, what's, right? You know what's funny is as you said that earlier about, about insurance, we, we are so used to the type of volume that we do. Yeah that it doesn't even register in my brain how someone that just heard 2000 life insurance policies didn't even, or it didn't 000. even, yeah. it didn't even register that, that, that meant 2000 people that I sat across the table from knee to knee, eye to eye, and sold every one of them. One at a time sold 2000 life insurance policies in a year. Cause the average insurance agent does probably what? 100, 150, 200, maybe they're doing well in a year. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, so it doesn't even, uh, sometimes we get so used to the type of volume that we do that that doesn't even really register with people. Yeah. Yeah. That's true, man. Well, that Tyler's right. That's what we're passionate about. We've had people pour into us and and, and it single-handedly is, is, is one of the reasons for our success. And we don't, we, we're tired of the programs and tired of all the, all the, all the bullshit that people are asked to buy. And, and, and it really gets people's, it builds a false hope. And when that doesn't work, man, sometimes people can't recover from that. Mm. And I think that's unforgivable. And so we want to reach, we want to reach all of those people. You tried stuff and you got sold a bill of goods. Um, you know, we want to, we want to reach them, help them. Right. Yep. And, and watch them go beyond. If you're watching this and you make 20 grand and you think that you literally would have died and gone to heaven to make 50, then let's take you from 20 to 50. All right. Let's take you from, from where you are now to where you want to be. I promise you when you get there, you'll have to set another goal and we'll be there to help them go beyond that. But, uh, but that's what we want to do. Yeah. So we want to get to right into the first topic because we want to provide tactical things that you can actually use, but there will be an overarching theme of every single topic that we ever discuss. And it'll be probably the narrative of our entire podcast. And that's hard work, hard work. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a misnomer. People people don't even know what that means anymore. They don't even it it's it's this paradigm. This you, we were talking about it earlier and talking about talking about the the rep for this that man I worked hard this week man <laughs> nine to four you know took some clients to lunch and I drove a hundred miles all week and mm -hmm. you know I mean ridiculous absolutely man put on man I. Every night I was at dinner putting it on the expense account, man, out late. I mean, what? what is that? Man, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The, the thing that's encouraging to me uh, and, and the reason why I'm so excited to be able to share that narrative with everyone about hard work is that I do believe that people aren't born with hard work ethic. Nope. I think it's something that not only do you learn over time, but it's, that it's it, it ebbs and flows, right? Sure. You're, you're going to have periods of time where you can crank it and you can be at an all time high. And then you'll have periods of time where it, you know, life happens, it dips. but there's certain things that can spark those, yep. those, uh, those momentum, t uh, changes. And, and that's what we want to be is that spark. Sure. Uh, because 
people really don't understand what hard work is. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there are so many hours in the day wasted. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sick Most and of tired of hearing people say, I don't, I don't have the time or I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have, I don't have enough time. You have enough time. The chances are you're probably just wasting 70% of it. Uh, at, at least, <laughs> at least, you know, the average yeah. salesperson, the amount of income producing activity, the number of hours that they actually spend in a day, if we actually knew that number, it's, it would be embarrassing. 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 You're right. So, I mean, that's what we want to do is we want to, we want to focus on the fact that you don't have to have any skills, talents, and abilities that are specific even to your industry if you have the hard work ethic. If you have right. that piece locked down, yeah. we can. I would. I'll take someone that has very little skills and talents, but has an insane hard work ethic. Any day over I'll the change, person, I'll change the world with that person. Oh, absolutely, I'll change the world with that person. And and you were one of those people, man. Um, now you had some. <laughs> you have abilities and talents, <laughs> not very good ones, but <laughs> but. Uh, but it's been amazing to see what's happened with this. I mean, yeah. I, I, I can tell you, people talk to me now, I'm nothing special. Mm -hmm. um, and people are like, well, you, I, you make this and you do that. And like, no, I, I really am nothing special. There, I've done nothing that somebody else can't do. And hard work is at the cornerstone. Um, you know, it's funny is we hear a lot, we're in the South, right? And uh, we hear it in church, you hear it in, uh, yeah, it's, it, you, we're in a state that sells a lottery. Right, mm -hmm. um, and and our society is a something for nothing, or 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 uh, entitled. In, in, well, not just entitled, but they want instant gratification. Mm. If they're not entitled, they want it now anyway. Right? If they're not, they, they want instant gratification. I, I want. It's a drive-through mentality mm. in our society, and uh, and I always I love the the the. Example, I heard it. I heard it in some church I was in, but it was seed time, harvest time, right? People talk about that because it relates to the farmer. And, um, but I was thinking back to that, and even they were teaching it wrong. <laughs> they were talking about two seasons, right? They were talking about a seed time and a harvest. And, um, and so when it comes to hard work, which one of those is harder? What was it hard to put the seed in the ground? Sure. Not really. <laughs> That's a great example. <laughs> that's what you. That's what you called a a bump and a miss. Spike. And a miss. <laughs> so, but but to, I haven't to, planted a lot of seeds. I haven't. Like, obviously. He's not a farmer. <laughs> but literally, is it hard to drop a seed in the ground? That's not no, as hard. Not. All right, that's not as hard. And then is it hard to pick fruit off the tree or to pick the corn off the thing? I mean, that takes, it takes work to drop the seed and it takes work to pick the fruit, but those are the easy things. Those, that's the easy work, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. The hard work, there's not just two seasons in seed time and harvest. There's actually three seasons. It's seed time, and then there's a progression time, and then there's a harvest. All of the hard work, what we're talking about, happens in that progression time. Right, mm -hmm. um, our uh, our seed time was when we started our insurance agency, right, and then our progression time was the three years of 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 plowing those fields, weeding those fields, and it was pounding in in and working in those, watering that plant, um, uh, making sure the sun didn't scorch it, making sure that it got what it needed, the nutrients, making sure that the plant grew straight, making sure nothing nothing ate it before, you know, mm -hmm. stamped it. So I'm, I'm using the farming example, but that's where all the work takes place. And, um, and so it's in that progression time, because anybody can, can start something and throw some seed out there. Anybody can anybody can show up when it's ripe and pick it, right, and get the fruit. But who's going to be around with the, in the hard stuff? And that's what we're talking about with hard work. No matter what you do, it's going to take hard work. It will take hard work. It's the only thing that works is work. So that's you know a little bit of what to expect. You know what's what's to come. Uh, we're going to provide you uh, strategic things that you can put into use, uh, take all of the things that are out there that you could purchase and learn from and kind of bundle it into little 15, 20 minute segments and give it to you absolutely for free. Uh, yep. But the overarching narrative will be hard work. So if that's not something that you're interested in, you probably shouldn't pay us any attention at all.
you probably don't pay your bills either. <laughs> so no big deal. You're not a wolf. It's okay. It's hey, it's okay to have an entitled mentality. You just won't listen to our podcast long. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. Because we're gonna bring it to you straight. Nobody wins without busting their ass. No one likes the light shed on their weaknesses. No, true. Yeah. Usually when, when you like living in ignorance, if somebody drops a light in there, you <laughs> flee from it. Just like so that's what we're going to do. And uh, we're going to come at you each week. And the uh, podcasts are going to be uh, uploaded on Friday. We're going to probably do some Facebook Live yeah. uh, for a lot of them on Monday, if not all of them. But we're going to get all that structure ironed out here over the next few weeks and get everything um, uh, in order to make this super impactful uh, and get this out to the masses and, and celebrate uh, sales. Celebrate sales yeah. and celebrate all the wolves out there Absolutely. that are hungry. Good deal. Well, we appreciate you guys getting on the very first Sales Wolves podcast and look forward appreciate to seeing it. you soon. We'll see you next time. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> all right.